Hey guys, my name is Ty Parrish, and welcome to my Mastering the Basics of Capture One. So in this video, we're going to go through the basics of the importing process, the user interface. We're gonna, don't mind that gnat. He flies around here, he's like my little pet. Just, yeah, if you see him, I, I just wanna. So in this video, we're gonna be going through the importing process the user interface, how I organize my files, how I work through my files, and then how I export my files so that you can get a handle on how to use Capture One. Uh, because obviously you came here because you don't know a dang thing, and neither do I. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I've been using Capture One for about three, four years now, so I know a little bit I don't know everything that has to do with Capture One. I don't also use it for every functionality that it has. So this video is gonna focus mostly on importing, a little bit of editing, and then the export process, just because I feel like that's the basics of getting through processing your raw photos. Let's hit new session. We're going to name it the day the month and the year. Then the client's name and then the job name. So another thing I like to do is I like to take that information and I like to put it on the capture folder, the selects folder, the output folder and the trash folder uh, because when I do a search in my finder I like to just search the name and I want all the files to pop up. So now that we have our session name, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import. We're gonna import by hitting that arrow up at the left hand corner. We can also right click on the top banner and we can do icons and text. So now you can read what, what's going on. So let's hit that arrow and we wanna import from, and if you have a USB, you might wanna click uh, choose folder and choose your USB or you can find your folder that way as well. I also check exclude duplicates just in case, you know, I'm importing into a session that has other folders, other files, and I don't want to duplicate files because that's a big old pain in the butt. We also want to switch the import to folder from, I believe when we start up, it is sessions folder. I can't quite remember. It's kind of defaulted to my settings, regardless of me resetting everything for this tutorial. But I change it to the capture folder because when we import, I want all of these to go inside of that capture folder so everything stays within the session. You can also rename it. You can back things up. You can put adjustments on there. And then here's the file information, but we're not gonna do any of that today. We're just going to simply select all and import. Now you may be noticing it says EIP on the files. That is because I'm packing the files together. Now what that means is that all of my edits, all of my information and that sidecar, the metadata is all packed into one file so that nothing really gets lost. You can unpack them as well just by right clicking and then unpack it. In there, that one is a NEF file. I believe this one is a Sony file. So unpack that one, and it's the ARW file. So then we can pack them right back up just by right clicking and pack EIP. That's one really cool thing I like about sessions over catalogs, but we won't get into that right now. I just like all of my information kind of packed up into one file, and I don't get lost anywhere. So this library tab over here has all of the things you need to kind of organize your files, including color tagging and star rating. So if you go over here and you select a photo and you like that photo, you can star rate it. Let's say I like it at about a two. Eh, so-so, right? It could be better. So I star a two. Well, I like this photo a little bit better, so I do that one as a three, right? So anyways, let's say I like this one a lot. Let's hit that five button, right? So the stars kind of just go up to five and that's about it. 
It's basically whatever you come up with with your stars and how you want to use them is how they can be used. And we can filter them out by just selecting the, the filter right here where it shows our star ratings. You can also do the same with color. So right here is your color tags. And if you like this photo, we can mark that one by selecting that little box and selecting the color that we want. Simple. So now if we go over here, hit red, it's in the red filter. Pretty cool. Uh, you can also use albums. So after you color tag them, you can make an album and then you can Oh, I lost my photo. So I don't know where that photo went, so I'll just hit my red tag, and I know I colored it red, so here it is. And we can just drag it right over to our new album that we made. Oh, or I guess if you miss, like I did, then it makes a new album. So you can just select it, hit enter, and say uh, winter shot, or red. Simple, pretty cool. So that's basically it for uh, organization. The next tab is your capture tab. Now, this is more when you tether. We're not gonna be going over that, so we're gonna skip right over to your lens correction. Sometimes I apply it before, sometimes I apply it after, sometimes I forget. But you can kind of select the different uh, defaults that you have. I suppose I should grab myself a photo so it works better. Um, I believe I shot this with a 50 millimeter. It's four years ago the shot was, so. So anyways, you can um, select your profiles here. Find Nikon, because I was shooting with the Nikon lens, and I shot with a one, or a 50 millimeter 1.8. Wherever that is, there. Boom. Did it do anything? Not much. It doesn't look like there's too much distortion, maybe just a touch. You can uh, adjust your distortion here. And I'll probably just jack it way up and make it sure it looks really ugly so you guys know it works. It didn't do much. You can also analyze it. If it's not working, sometimes you need to hit that analyzing button. You can also modify it uh, just by your eye. If you wanna adjust things, you can uh, go in here and you can kinda readjust things the way that you want reset that quick. All right, so the next tab is your color tab. Now this, self-explanatory, I assume you kind of know what's going on since you're here and we shoot in RAW and we need to process RAW photos. So since I'm assuming that, it's safe to say you know what some of these tools are. Um, a tool that you may not know is this normalized tool. This normalized tool is a new tool to Capture 111 kind of cool. So you can uh, select a gray point and then you can color correct and expose to that point. It's kind of cool. So you can use it however you want. You can click here and you can change it to sRGB and then it will uh, expose and white balance to uh, that color space. Well, that was pretty uh, extreme. Yeah, see, I haven't mastered this tool, but it's there, it's cool. I've used it a few times where it's really, really worked. It's really come in handy. But yeah, obviously I need to get used to it. So anyways, we'll just reset it. But yeah, just, just mess around with it. It is a really cool tool, despite how I just displayed it. <laughs> so anyways, I shot this with a A7S and it's just auto curve right now. You can go to linear. You can also manually white balance it if you need. There's some color balance tools with some presets here. I made a few myself. And then there's some standard presets that come with Capture One. And as you can see, I'm just hovering over them so you can see all the different ones they have. Then we got black and white tool here. So these sliders control the color density of the image. So 
as you can see I slide them around and they either get lighter or darker in the image. You got your um, split toning here. So that's your split toning tab. And then you got your color editor. Now some of you will have a color editor, some of you will have the advanced if you get the pro version of Capture One, and then you have a skin tool tab, which skin tool tab is awesome, it's amazing, I love it. The advanced, I, I like it for certain things, but what I usually do is I usually go into the color editor and I select maybe um, a tone that is kind of off a little bit, and I select it, and then I can adjust the hue if need be, or the saturation, or even the lightness. I probably just made it really ugly, but I'm just kind of demonstrating what you can do. You can also just change the hue here of the overall image, then the saturation. So on the advanced tab, you can hit the plus and then make another hue and saturation. Hue and saturation, I, it sounds like I'm in Photoshop. But anyways, if, yeah, if you just hit the plus button, you can make as many of these as you want. So, reset that. Now, if you make an adjustment, like so, like let's say you change the hue a little bit, and then you're not sure if you like it, right? You can just hold Option, click on this little arrow, and it'll reset, but then when you lift off the arrow, it'll come back. If you tap it, it'll reset everything, and you'll have to start all over but you can also control Z, it'll bring everything back. So the next tool tab is your uh, exposure tool tab. This is where you're gonna find your exposure tools, your contrast, your lightness, and your saturation. So where else are you gonna find your uh, dynamic range? Probably wanna adjust some of that because we got bright snow and it's usually nice and overexposed. But then we got your levels tool. And as you can see, the top here is your highlights. And this is your uh, white level. And this is your dark level, black levels. And this is your shadow level. These are your midtones here. So, a lot of editors like to use the curves tool here. You got your RGB curves and then you got your luma curves. So in this corner, you can lift your shadows or you can bring your black point down. You can bring your white point up or you can reduce your white point. Limit it a little bit. So it's the same for the RGB curves. You can limit your RGB highlights or you can lift them. Lift your shadows and then you can set your black point here. So, as you can tell, it's a really powerful tool. You can do a lot of crazy adjusting with this. This clarity tool is a pretty awesome tool. I love it a lot. I thought it was gonna be overdone, you know, people were gonna just jack up the structure and kinda overdo things, and you can see how it is just the image. It's, uh, it's not overdone, it's all the way up, and it's not really overdone, I mean, in parts, it could look overdone a little bit. However, if you did that in Photoshop, it'd be like way whacked. So then you can bring up your clarity. Oh, I'm sorry, I hit the structure slider, not the clarity slider. But as you can see, even the clarity slider on top of the structure slider, it really pops every little detail out and it's pretty awesome. But that's on a natural setting. You can actually punch that up even more. But anyways, Obviously, it's way, way overdone. I'm just really just demonstrating this for you. Here's the vignette tool. So, and that's the exposure tab. It's super powerful. It's a, it's a great tool tab. And uh, we'll be spending about 90% of our time inside of that tab and then the color tab. But, oh, I'm gonna go back because I actually liked that adjustment. Not the one after the clarity, but the ones right before the clarity. So here's, here's the demonstration with the control Z. 
you can go all the way back. You can also hit the undo button here and the redo here. So the next tool tab is your details tool tab. This is where you can spot your focusing and you can do your sharpening and your uh, film emulations or film grains. I've only played around a little bit with the silver and the soft and then the fine. I actually have a preset here of one that I use often. So I'm not sure if you can see it on your side, but you can see it a little bit on my side. And uh, you can use this Lupe tool here to uh, do a render of your image. And if it's too small, then we can, uh, we can make it large. There you go. You can also uh, just hit Control Plus and zoom in. Whoa. Like so. And yeah, got a little bit of noise reduction here. So the next tool to have here is your styles. So if you want to select a style, you can just go through the menus and you can just pick the different styles. Let's zoom out. I don't know why we have some weird settings, but anyways. Oh, we're stacking, that's why. So here we got stacking turned on, which is in your style adjustment thing while bobber. Let's see, it's right here, yeah. So if you hit the three dots up there, you'll see that stack styles is on. So if we turn that off, then it should just apply one style at a time. Yep, there you go. That one actually looks pretty darn good. So we'll, let's just keep that one there. All right. So here is your clipboard for your adjustments. Now, there's not anything in there, which I'm curious of why, because we made some adjustments. So, so what I usually do when this happens is I hit the up button and I copy those adjustments in so I can see them. So yeah, here are the adjustments that we made on this image already, which is kind of cool. And if you like those adjustments, then you can save them. So next tab is annotations which I'm not really gonna go over, uh, cause that's for like high-end retouching, or if you wanna send it off to a retoucher, then you can just write your notes in and then uh, select your, uh, your output path to Photoshop so that your retoucher can see your notes. Uh, here's your metadata. We don't really need to go over that, but here's your output. Now, so when I start an image, I like to know where it's going to start and where it's going to stop. So when I take my first image, I'm, I know I'm going to print this, or I know I'm going to take this and I'm going to take it to Instagram, you know? So let's just make a new one. That way it won't be so confusing. So if we hit the plus button, we can go new recipe. Now let's select the show enabled only so that we're only focused in on the new one that we just made. And let's do, um, what is it, 1800 for web? SRGB, whoops, SRGB, ha, there we go. So the reason why I like to know that is because when we edit, I like to know where it's gonna go and how I'm gonna edit it. And so when I edit it, I would like to know when I hit this proofing button that it shows me the soft proof for where it's going to end up going, right? So I know this may be a little advanced for some of you, I don't know. Um, some other people are like, yeah, dude, we know. So the way I like to set it up is I like to go to my proof. There you go. And I like to set it up where I select or selected recipe. So when I select my recipe here, that it reads this process recipe here. So we're gonna go SR, or JPEG. We're gonna go 80. We're gonna bring this to sRGB. We're gonna go 72. We can go long edge. Whoops. Pixels. 1800. Whoa. 1800. And we can process this out to other programs that we have. 
but we're not gonna do that for this particular one. We can do another one where we can send one off to Photoshop. So what I like to do, and this is just me, is I also like to go subfolder, and then I like to name it the same. When I process my recipe out by hitting this process button, it goes straight to my output folder into 1800 for web sRGB. There's my, there's my file right there. Boom, done. So this tab is where it shows when you, when you select a whole bunch of images and you render them all out, then it shows the history. So like it'll show where it's at, if it stopped, um, if there's an error or anything like that. And then the other tab there is your history. So that's after it processes out, it just stacks up and it shows you what you've processed. So the other thing that I do is I customize my top bar here. I go right click, customize toolbar. And here are all of the different tools that you can put up there. So you've got copy, you got rotate, you got edit selected, uh, you got proofing, exposure warning, alignment, annotations, your, your cursor tools. Uh, so what I like to add is I like to add variant just because um, usually I do it a different way, but sometimes I hit that button, you know, it's kind of personal preference. Figure out what you use, put it up there. That, that's pretty much it. So I use styles. Um, I know the styles is over here as well, but I like to put it up there. I also put focus mask. Now this is an important one that needs a little bit of explaining, uh, but it's really cool. So when you select it, it basically shows you what's in focus. So it puts this little overlay and it shows you kind of what's in focus. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can go through all of your images that way and you can uh, star rate them. So like, let's say you select a whole batch of them you put that focus mask on it, you can see which ones are not in focus like at all. Uh, it's super helpful that way. But for now, that's all we really need to go over. That's all we really need to focus on. Um, but remember, you're gonna organize in this tab. You're gonna tether in this tab. You're gonna do your lens correction in this tab. You can do color in this. Oh, I forgot something. So, the way that I was trained was I set my exposure, my contrast levels, my brightness all first before I do color stuff. That's just me. I know lots of different people do it lots of different ways. There's no real rules. So what I like to do is I like to hit the control tab, tap and drag it to the other side of that exposure tab. So, so when I go through these tabs, I like to go from left to right from start to organizing to go through all my adjustments and then to my export and then out the door. So yeah, that's it. So if you like this video, please thumbs up it. Is that how you say it? Please thumb. Please give it a like. Dang Nat. If anybody wants to adopt a Nat, I have one up for adoption. Uh, he's really bu bugging me. He doesn't uh, respect my space in my studio. I thought he was going to fly over here again and like smack me or something. Anyways, we'll be going over more stuff on other videos, but I hope you like this one. Please share it. Please like it. Please comment. If there's anything you want to learn, please put it in the comments. I'm open for suggestions. It's, it's really hard to teach people when you don't have people to talk to. So I need suggestions. So put them down below uh, so that the next video may be what you need to get editing in Capture One, to learn it all, and to maybe migrate over from you know that LR program. Not that they're bad, not saying that. I love LR and the Adobe people. I, I just said it. I just should just say, we all know who we're talking about, right? So anyways, Lightroom. I said it, Lightroom. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. It's over. So until next time, talk to you later. Cheers.